So I've got one more project I want to take care of on my record truck today. Some of the things I've done today is I've installed a replacement seat that doesn't have any rips and tears. And I put a steering wheel cover on here and did the headliner. I put a new uh, radio in there I got from Amazon for 25 bucks. It's pretty nice. Put a couple new speakers in there and stuff just to give a little comfort to the ride. I put some new sound ending mat under the whole uh, cab just to give a little quiet and comfort. What I'm going to look at now is uh, the last fault code I have on my uh, check engine light and I want to correct that. So on the C6500, you uh, this has a, a Caterpillar 3126 in it. Turn the key on. One thing you get is an intake heater light that comes on. And your check engine light should always come on when you just have a key on before you start it. Your check engine light come on and lets you know that the computer is hooked up and that you have a bulb in here. The intake heater light will come on until the intake heater has heated up some air and then the intake heater light will go out and then it's ready to start. It doesn't have any glow plugs. So now it's ready to, to start. the thing starts easy and, and runs strong that I've had new injectors in there and some other work that I've done well you see that the check engine light is on and there's a fault and uh, the intake heater light is still on but it'll go out after a certain number of seconds of warming up the air if I give it a little gas that active check engine light will go off and the fault code that I get when I retrieve the fault codes is injection actuation pressure control. So these uh, HEUI injector systems here, this is a hydraulically actuated electronic unit injector and basically what we have is a high pressure oil pump. It takes up engine oil it pressurizes it to about I don't know, maybe 4,000 psi, and provides that hydraulic pressure to the to the injectors to give them the force needed when they're electronically actuated to hammer in the fuel into the cylinder. So a couple things that could go wrong is this pump could fail, but they're usually really pretty reliable. Sometimes the gear on the front can be damaged, and then the pump isn't turning at all, and you have no fuel. Uh, uh, hydraulic pressure to run those injectors and you'll have a no start. Uh, another thing that can go wrong is right here is the pressure sensor. That sensor can fail. Uh, these pumps are very expensive. The sensor is reasonably priced kind of thing. And the other thing it is, you know, this tells the computer what the pressure is and then the computer uses this valve right here to regulate that pressure, opening and closing this little spool valve. Electrical connector, Here's the uh, injection actuation pressure control valve. And this is the valve I'm going to replace because I believe I have pressure. I believe the sensor is reading the pressure, but the pressure is low. And I think the reason the pressure is low is there might be some uh, oil passing by this valve and not uh, causing the... the uh, oil to pressurize to the amount that the computer is required is, is calling for. So I'm going to replace this valve and see about uh, if that uh, corrects that fault. I hope that it does. My local uh, parts place wanted $280 for this. I drove 40 miles to the actual Milton Cat dealer in Syracuse and got the part for $180. So about $180 bucks is what that cost. And here's this valve right here. So let's take a look at what it is. Here's our electrical connector. Here's our little spool valve. We got a O-ring. I mean, it could simply be the O-rings in there or something. I don't know, but I'm gonna replace this valve. And it's just a control valve that controls that pressure. 
and I see that this comes apart. I'm sure that's so that you can turn this to be the right angle to get your connector on there once it's tightened into the block. So when I first was going through the wiring on this truck, I found that the metal clip that holds this connector on was gone, so I just crisscrossed it with some tire wraps to keep it secure. First thing I did when I was troubleshooting this fault is I changed the oil in the oil filters. Uh, if you're, I, guess, I guess if your oil was thinned out with some diesel fuel or contaminants, it might not be the uh, right viscosity to build up a pressure there. I don't know. That's the first thing I tried. I can put this around in position that it's easy to get this wire on there. So you need to over tighten that. Looks like the other one was over tightened and stripped out a little bit. Sure wish I had that little clip for that. But I'll crisscross a couple of wire ties on there and keep that on there. All right, let's see what happens. Been looking forward to this. All right, well, we had to let it warm up a little bit and let the uh, air bleed out of that oil. And uh, I think we solved the problem. There we go, one more check engine light. Starts easy, runs strong.